Chapter 3 The Letters from No One The escape of the Brazilian boa constrictor earned Harry his longest ever punishment. By the time he was allowed out of his cupboard again, the summer holidays had started, and Dudley had already broken his new video camera, crashed his remote control aeroplane, and, first time out on his racing bike, knocked down old Mrs. Fig as she crossed Privet Drive on her crutches. Harry was glad school was over, but there was no escaping Dudley's gang, who visited the house every single day. Piers, Dennis, Malcolm and Gordon were all big and stupid, but as Dudley was the biggest and stupidest of the lot, he was the leader. The rest of them were all quite happy to join in Dudley's favourite sport, Harry hunting. This is why Harry spent as much time as possible out of the house, wandering around and thinking about the end of the holidays, where he could see a tiny ray of hope. When September came, he would be going off to secondary school, and for the first time in his life he wouldn't be with Dudley. Dudley had been accepted at Uncle Vernon's old private school, Smeltings. Piers Polkis was going there too. Harry, on the other hand, was going to Stonewall High, the local public school. Dudley thought this was very funny. They stuff people's heads down the toilet the first day at Stonewall, he told Harry. Want to come upstairs and practice? No, thanks, said Harry. The poor toilets never had anything as horrible as your head down it. It might be sick. And then he ran before Dudley could work out what he'd said. One day in July... Aunt Petunia took Dudley to London to buy his smeltings uniform, leaving Harry at Mrs. Fig's. Mrs. Fig wasn't as bad as usual. It turned out she'd broken her leg tripping over one of her cats, and she didn't seem quite as fond of them as before. She let Harry watch television and gave him a bit of chocolate cake that tasted as though she'd had it for several years. That evening, Dudley paraded around the living room for the family in his brand new uniform. Smeltings boys wore maroon tailcoats, orange knickerbockers, and flat straw hats called boaters. They also carried knobbly sticks used for hitting each other while the teachers weren't looking. This was supposed to be good training for later life. As he looked at Dudley in his new knickerbockers, Uncle Vernon said gruffly that it was the proudest moment of his life. Aunt Petunia burst into tears and said she couldn't believe it was her ickle Dudley Kins. He looked so handsome and grown up. Harry didn't trust himself to speak. He thought two of his ribs might already have cracked from trying not to laugh. There was a horrible smell in the kitchen the next morning when Harry went in for breakfast. It seemed to be coming from a large metal tub in the sink. He went to have a look. The tub was full of what looked like dirty rags swimming in grey water. "'What's this?' he asked Aunt Petunia. Her lips tightened as they always did if he dared to ask a question. "'Your new school uniform,' she said. Harry looked in the bowl again. "'Oh,' he said, "'I, I didn't realise it had to be so wet.' "'Don't be stupid.' snapped Aunt Petunia. I'm dyeing some of Dudley's old things grey for you. It'll look just like everyone else's when I've finished. Harry seriously doubted this, but thought it best not to argue. He sat down at the table and tried not to think about how he was going to look on his first day at Stonewall High, like he was wearing bits of old elephant skin, probably. Dudley and Uncle Vernon came in, both with wrinkled noses because of the smell from Harry's new uniform. Uncle Vernon opened his newspaper as usual, and Dudley banged his smelting stick, which he carried everywhere, on the table. They heard the click of the mail slot and flop of letters on the doormat. Get the mail, Dudley, said Uncle Vernon from behind his papers. Make Harry get it. Get the mail, Harry. Make Dudley get it. Poke him with your smelting stick, Dudley. Harry dodged the smelting stick and went to get the mail. Three things lay on the doormat. A postcard from Uncle Vernon's sister Marge, who was vacationing on the Isle of Wight, a brown envelope that looked like a bill, and... A letter for Harry?